Welcome to DigiBros Creative Consultation Corner, where I am going to talk to some of my friends and the procrastinators about their careers as creative artists and uh, what their plans are for the future and how I can help them to imagine those plans. So, Sick. Tom. What up, my dude? Um, how would you describe what you do? Uh, complicated and vastly overscoped. I want to know all of the things that you do. That I do or want yeah. to do? That you do. That you currently do regularly. Or, or let's actually expand it out because I know you change a lot. So yeah. if this is going to be a challenge, but I, I want you to go through every step of the last like year of every type of thing you've done sure in the last year in sequence you can like go from each era because i know at the start of that would be like when we were living together right was slightly less than a year ago let's see uh january of last year well we're in march now march of last year i just uploaded the first build of the izumi demo mm. so i was in hardcore game dev mode and I was not sure where I wanted to go with that demo because I worked on it for like at that point about five months mm -hmm. to the detriment of everything else that I'd been doing. This was a demo of a, a 2D side scrolling. Yeah, like a Sega Genesis Sega inspired Genesis style action retro game. action game. It was, the point was to take. And you can play this demo right now. Yeah, I've updated on... it since then. It plays way better now. People loved it. Someone made a video of the new version and like was geeking out the whole time like oh man maybe I should go keep... go play it uh while you listen to this there's a link in the description yeah it's pretty fun so it's a sega genesis visuals paired with like modern action mechanics was mm -hmm. the kind of idea and um i just launched it on Newgrounds, and the initial idea was like i'll see if this takes off if people like it i was assuming it probably wouldn't get that much traction it like kind of blew up on Newgrounds mm. to the point where I was telling everybody, dude, you gotta get on Newgrounds. Like, I fucking yeah. get, like, 15k views in, like, a uh -huh. month on this game. And I got, like, featured on the front page and everything. Not realizing it was a total fluke because everything else I've posted on there since has flopped. Right. So it was just, like, a right time sort of thing. So I've, I've never been on Newgrounds, like, at all. Yeah. It just was not in my scope when it was popular. Newgrounds so. is very weird. Because, like... Every there's it's separated into portals. They have the audio portal, the art portal, the animation portal, and the games portal. Mm -hmm. And I've posted in animation, games, and uh, art. And the art portal is very hug boxy. Everybody likes your stuff mm -hmm. and comments. The other two are just vicious. Mm -hmm. Like people will just one star you instantly, leave no comments. So like everything I've posted that's not just a static piece of art, despite being the exact same assets threes across the board mm. like they'll just get bombed into oblivion i wonder why it's very strange like someone was telling me that there's just people on newgrounds that just one star things as they pop up just for fun i mean there's people on youtube who do that sure so, so it's just like but i think because the attractions like the traffic is smaller on newgrounds that's does much more damage to your ratio mm -hmm. as opposed to something on youtube but whatever uh did that the reaction because it was a fluke was really good so i spent the entire rest of the year working on the game and it the problem is that like the game's really overscoped it's too big and once i saw i finished like the combat and the character mechanics and stuff which is stuff i really liked i started doing level design no idea how to do level design my brain does not have ideas and while i could definitely get the ideas mm -hmm. if i'm not invested my interest wanes and so it became like very grindy and sloggy to even get a gray box of a level which is just like mm -hmm. putting everything is just like work in progress assets just to have like the collisions work and see if you can navigate through stuff right. so that was a problem and because progress was slow and all the work that i was doing was all behind the scenes mm -hmm. just like oh i fixed the uh state machine so it's more efficient now it's like half the lines of logic as right. opposed to before and like that was a big deal but you can't like show anybody nobody right. cares so there was nothing to help promote all the work i was doing in the process mm -hmm. so interest waned because I could easily tell how much how interested people were in Azumi as a character by the amount of fan art I was getting, and it dropped off heavily after the yeah. demo because there's just nothing interesting to show after that point. It's it's funny because, uh, you know, I I kind of measured things similarly, and like, not only, I mean, part of the thing with fan art is that it will feed into itself because if people see that you retweet their fan art, they will go, oh, I want to make one too, so I can get retweeted, you know. Right. 
And so, like, it tends to come in spurts where, like, I'll get a drawing of just me. And then, like, in the next few days, there'll be a couple more sometimes. You know, and it's like, okay. Clearly, it's because they recognize that, like, oh, yeah, drawing art of Digi. That's an interesting thought that might not occur to you normally, you know? Sure. Um, but, like, with Kus Omega, it was like uh, the fan art started coming in. I started tweeting it, and then it was just, it didn't stop for a while. And then, like, as soon as it got to a point where, like, like there was for a while, it was like, okay, now it's just one a day, and now it's, like, one a week. And then it's like, okay, a couple weeks have passed, and I haven't gotten a new fan art. So clearly we are at the point where people are forgetting. They're not still interested. They've moved right. on to something else. Need to strike again, you know? Uh, but yeah, anyway. Okay, so um, I think it was probably around, like, I want to say October, when the grind was getting really bad, and stuff was really slowing down. And I was releasing more, like, just, like, other things on new grounds like art and things like that and i was realizing that had no traction that was a fluke it was weird i was like okay this is not working mm -hmm. um so i was like i'm doing all the graphics in the game are all based on 3d models mm -hmm. so i have all these 3d assets i can do basically whatever i want with them and i'm at the point now where it's just like okay i need to make smaller content that has quicker turnaround yeah. i need to make azumi a character and a brand in and of herself right. So then I can pass off all the bullshit game stuff that I don't feel like doing to mm -hmm. people who actually are interested. And if I get big enough, I can pay them because I'll have more money. Right. And then I'll make something really fucking cool. Because mm -hmm. um, the big moonshot project for Zumi is still like a fucking Shinobi clone with Devil May Cry Combat that right. is like the best thing ever made by a human. Um, so the only problem with that is that the like main like origin story of Azumi is tied up in that project. And I don't want to separate the story from it because it's so fucking legit. Right. And there's like certain story elements that'll tie into gameplay mm -hmm. um that would be really cool and like cool moments i don't want to remove from gameplay because it'll be so fucking sick when right. it happens um so but that's fine i have like a bunch of other like narrative ideas and can do with zoom because the cool thing with her is that she has like it's just rule of cool all the way down like the yeah. entire reason i made a zoomie in the first place was because I was like leaning back that whole time. Um, I thought for a second you were just like get down, you're out of frame or something. No, I was just putting my <laughs> foot up on the. It's the fine. Underside Keep me feet. under control. But yeah, um, the whole idea of Zoom is just like it's just cool shit. Because all my other big projects before that have all been these big sprawling narrative endeavors mm -hmm. that are so fucking overscoped and take so long that they're just never gonna get done. So, for the Zumi, I purposely set out to do everything with her opposite what I did in my previous projects. Because, yeah. like, clearly, there's, like, years of work that don't pan out. So, she has, like, no sprawling backstory. No right. interconnected world. It's just, like, if it's cool, it goes in there. And just bullshit an explanation, it's fine. Yeah. You know? Because, like... She's pure aesthetic persona. Yeah. To quote a video I might have made. Yeah, two yeah. years ago. <laughs> so... It's pretty, it's pretty satisfying to work in that way. Um, and so now it's just a matter of like making small projects. And another thing I'm really trying to fucking kill, I'm trying to kill my ego. Because yeah. M. Not Strange is the coolest guy ever. And because I just want to be him, uh, I want to like wear his skin and become him. Yeah. Like he's just made me like... He, he's one of my collection of dads. Yes. I have a collection of like guys in their mid to late 30s. It's like Dick he's in, his, he's in his mid forties now. Is he? Dude. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, guys who are in—I mean, uh, I should say more like guys in their early forties because yeah. Dick's about to hit forty. Ghost Lightning's in his forties. <sighs> Fucking uh, Mem Dot. So like guys who are old enough to <clears throat> may not quite old enough to be my dad, old enough to be like my cousin who was way older. Which I do have a cousin who's. They're like your cool uncle that, that you go to when you yeah. when your parents would like flip shit too much. I never. My my parents are the cool ones. In my I parents. don't. I don't have an uncle like that at all. But I just assume that that is real and something that could happen. Surely. surely. Um. So, but yeah, he's like all about the one man band and like that's just what he does and he yeah. has the passion, and he's just cool being like totally fucking obscure and just making the greatest things of all time, mm -hmm. and I'm not that. Yeah. I would love to be that, but I just again, it's been X amount of years. It doesn't work. So I'm trying to, like, kill my ego of, like, I have to be a control freak and, like, divvy out things. Like, okay, you guys could do music or, like, you could come up with ideas. You know what I think that you are missing that MDOT has <clears throat> is the level of pride he has in his accomplishments. That's true. Because 
I, I when I think about like how does M dot M dot gets picked up, you know, like his work has been like distributed in some or talked about in some fashion. Like it's independently created, but like um, it's clear that he's not making his money through like Patreon or something like that. You know, right. he he has like no viewership on the internet. So wherever he is making money from. It must be that his work is funded in some way, or maybe he just does commissions sometimes and doesn't really profit from no his idea. main work. It's always been confusing, but like I get the impression that he is somebody who, after completing his film, would have shown it to everyone. Right. Like he would have sat down anybody he knew, tried to get it in front of producers. I think he even said that he had like I think there's one story he told about like going way out of his way to try to promote like his first film by like I don't know handing out discs of it or something. And I've heard yeah. many stories like that. I think that you have a lot of trouble like feeling so good about something you did that you're going to make everybody you know look at it, you know. I think I think a big problem with just my stuff in general is even with my stuff. I think it's just that like like an interesting I look at like you versus me for example. Mm -hmm. And like Incidentally, I have that same problem. I just, it's like with you, you just have like a, a confidence that I don't. I feel mm -hmm. in a lot of your work. The 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 thing about me is that I am almost never confident that anyone will like my stuff. I only know that I will like my stuff. Like right. I gauge it up to the level of how much do I like it, and sometimes I don't even like it that much. Like I might make a video and be like, "This is kind of okay," but like. I I, under, I think other people will like it more than I do, mm -hmm. you know? Like, I have a pretty good gauge from the audience response of, like, what they do or don't like. And it's, like, I love my music, you know? Like, I, will, I listen to my own albums regularly. I play that shit all the time. It's extremely hit or miss with not only, like, my friends, but my fans, but anybody, you know? Like, anyone I play it for, you never know, even, like, track by track. I've never known anybody who likes, like, every song I do except May, you know? Sure. Um, but she probably just wouldn't tell me if she didn't play one of my songs. But, uh, you know, the, I, I feel really strongly about it. I never expect anybody to like it. I never, like, so it's really hard for me to, like, promote it because even though I feel really strongly about it, I'm, like, kind of content to just be with it myself. And, like, as much as I would love it if other people liked it, it's hard for me to go through the pain of, like, promoting it and then getting shit on because it is it's it's closer to me than the stuff that is right. popular you know like the stuff i make that people really pay attention to i have less in, emotional i mean i think in. that's why i did well when we did like the pony stuff on youtube because mm -hmm. i had no emotional attachment to that it was like cookie cutter right. factory content and, and it's funny because i was really passionate about it at the time which is why like when i switched gears and did the s4 diaries and everything it was like this chaotic kind of time where like a lot of people stopped watching because it's like suddenly this is not made to be accessible like right. i literally just turned that switch from on to off and it was suddenly very different and a different type of people was watching and for a different reason but the view count went down and the patreon went up and i was like that's exactly what i want to see you sure. know um i'm getting on a tangent no no it's good it's it's a good point and so i don't know it's just like I think the most important thing is like being confident in your own work mm -hmm. and I don't have that. Um, I think it's just how I was raised, you know, whatever. Yeah. There's just a personality flaw there and I don't really know how to fix that. I feel like fixing that underlying issue would probably just elevate everything I do just because mm -hmm. I would allow it a better chance to succeed and not handicap it from birth. This might be a weird question, but how much do you feel like your dad being like a novelist who never really broke like does that like weigh on you as like a shadow that like oh he couldn't do it i can't either or well, anything like that not particularly because like he was not he's not always been a novelist like my right. whole life okay. he started probably when i was like 13 mm -hmm. and the reason he started publishing books is i told him to do it oh because i had already known about the internet and shit and i was just like because he just was writing them for fun. He wrote he wrote novels in like college and then just sat on them and did nothing mm. with them. Because what are you gonna do with a self published right. novel in like eighty five? You know, like yeah. you have no options. But like he started writing a book and I thought it was good. And I'm the one who convinced him to try this whole publishing thing because right. he thought he wasn't good enough. Yeah. And I told him you're fucking retarded and do it. 
Yeah. And now he's writing novels all the time. So, like, I don't feel that pressure because, like, I was the one who started it. I was the one who that instigated that thing. Because, like, he never would have done it. Right. He just would have stayed home and been a family man. It's funny, though, that that's the way that you responded to him and then can't, like, have... But you have the same problem he does. Well, I think a lot of my personal problems are inherited from him because we have a lot of the same issues right because like he will do what i do where like his stuff always takes a back seat and like his group efforts like doing other things for other people mm. will take priority right like so, like i put a hundred percent into any of the collaborative stuff that i do with you guys because i feel like i now have to provide for other people right. and like there's other people that we're relying on this to happen. But if it's my own shit, I'm just like, oh, I'm not even fucking good. Who fucking cares? And that's a bad attitude to have. Um, well, we we got far away from the... We're 17 minutes in, and we are not even close to answering the first question yeah. I asked you, which is... We're in space. All the things that you have been... Like, all the things that you have done or been doing is the okay. way i want to put we'll it just, in the last we'll year bullet point so we have quick. the we i think we understand the whole history of the game the game for the last year it is currently on hiatus i think yeah i'm gonna I'm put it on ice for now um might come back to it right now the idea is just like small content there's like small content medium content and moonshot content i want to try right. and start dividing up my week into like okay i want to have like three small things every week to just mm -hmm. keep the algorithm fed that right. i can do in like a day or two and then for the next three weeks of that month well we'll get into your future plans in a bit but we'll okay. talk we still need to get through all the stuff that you, you're, you've been doing well from october which is when the game started to settle down to now it's just been um going back to 3d and designing characters and trying to get like an aesthetic down like a new aesthetic i got mm -hmm. that tune shader which looks really good i think there's a lot of potential in that um because i've always worked in black and white and then when i did that cell shader i'm like oh color's pretty cool yeah. like for the first time ever i was like whoa this is like better than black and white this never happens so yeah it was mostly just going back to 3d and just kind of refining the aesthetic and figuring out what i wanted to do with that so it's pretty much it and then i am games did some i am Games stuff so you didn't even talk about any youtube videos you've made or any i mean that's, other things you've done like like what else is there you even do a matters? patreon podcast i want you to go through everything do those exhaustively. count exhaustively everything those every don't... aspect of your career everything oh well i mean i don't even consider that like work i just consider that like bleh. I listen to those podcasts i mean i don't think they're bad this is not something that like i would put in a creative box but it's right. like yeah i do two podcast series i do a weekly one for five dollar patrons where i just have a channel where they can leave suggestions on discord and i'll just take them out at the end of the week and i'll respond to them um and then for one any for every patron i just do random rants whenever i have like a, a thought that i need to get off my chest anybody right. can just listen to those uh so those have been pretty they, good they come out like just uh seemingly erratically <clears throat> or at random they i usually try to get them out on monday because sometimes there's like four of them at a time or something like there'll be like a few all at once i don't think i've ever posted four at a time sometimes i'll post two because i'll post a rant and the podcast at the same time mm. okay i guess i just didn't distinguish them as different shows yeah they're just for two different tiers but there's that uh fucking i did a bunch of iron games videos solo which was pretty cool what was your favorite one See if I can remember the ones I you made. Yeah, the Neo one, the Dark Souls one, the uh, those are like the higher effort ones. The Pokemon one that got a bunch of views suddenly. I think that my two favorite ones would probably be Neo because I thought it made a really good point. I thought it was a pretty in depth breaking down of Neo. Actually, you know what? The two favorite ones would be the Pokemon one, the actual review because I thought the whole point about the Pokemon Camp and being really wholesome was pretty choice. Uh, and then the Dark Souls healing video I thought was cool. Because that was just like, why the fuck would you spend like almost 20 minutes talking about this? Yeah. But uh, yeah, that was cool. Um, so you have the I Am Games videos. Yep. You've done, also been on the Procrastinators podcast, obviously. Yes. Um, and doing bonus episodes and regular... I'm trying to give people a sense of how much you do, basically. You know, it's like, weird you say that because I feel like I do nothing. We all feel that way because it doesn't feel like work. But when you, like, think about it, 
in terms yes. of like before like think of it this way it might not feel like work after you did it but how did it feel before you did it when you were convincing yourself to do it okay well maybe this is because like for me like i have like mental classifications and so mm -hmm. like a 3d animation is work mm -hmm. like doing the podcast like doesn't even register as like creative work it's just right. like a thing yeah. So like I could if I like I spent the last week doing nothing but printing shirts for Radcon, making buttons for Radcon, making the PC panel user button that nobody mm -hmm. knew about except for Nate for Radcon, then doing fifty hours of like prep for the lecture. Mm -hmm. If you said Tom, what'd you do this week? I'd be like, I did nothing. Right. Because I didn't do anything, any art Related stuff. To your, so it doesn't to matter. Work. Yeah. Um, well, that's why I had to get all that out of you, <laughs> not for your sake, but for the audience's sake to actually comprehend the full breadth. Because like for me personally i have no central column of what i do so it's there is nothing i can grab onto and say like this is what i do and this is all the other bullshit i do it's just a ton of bullshit right. so it's like if you ask me like what do you do i'd be like oh boy like let me sit you down let me <laughs> unfold the list here you know i live the crypto punk life and this anyway, is what it entails we're gonna actually get into my actual written down questions now. All right, let's do it. Let's fucking go. So the first thing I'm going to ask you is, how far ahead do you tend to plan in your career? Um, huh. I suppose it depends on what you mean by that. Like, uh, do you, we'll actually, we'll break it down into sections. Because, like, I tend to have a very vague idea of some longer term, like, you know, what I want to do in the next year. But, like, mostly i just think about what i'm going to do for the next month okay so where would you put yourself in that i mean i kind of for i have like a grand vision of what i would like like even the next like five years to be mm -hmm. uh the problem is i have no way of actually doing the stuff that i would want to do right so it's like coming all the way back to the beginning it's like all right how what's the best path to get there right because even right now like I see this big moonshot Azumi game that's like a love letter to everything I love in life. That mm -hmm. would be like the perfect thing. Like if I finish the, the game, the final game, like the not just the side right. scroller, the, the the full three D. You can't think you can get that done in five years. No, but like I think I, if I keep going, I could start it in five years. Okay. Like five years from now, I would have enough I see what skill mean. and clout to begin that project, which would right. probably take another five or plus years to do. You really are going to need to build Azumi into a goddamn empire. That's exactly what I want to do. Yeah. Which, it would be very difficult. So, like, currently, how far ahead do you have, like, any kind of concrete plan for post-Radcon 4? Uh, well, post-Radcon 4, I'm going to start breaking up my months into, like I was saying, the weeklies, dailies, and moonshot projects. Because, mm -hmm. like, the big problem I have right now is that I have, how do I get to that post five year path because there's lots of content that needs to be made and skills that need to be acquired mm -hmm. and it's hard to do both of those at the same time right because it's like if you're making things you're not learning things That's, you're learning things you're not making things it's really difficult that like when you know if i when i started making music like people might say things like you know oh, you're you're much better at making analysis videos and it's like well yeah i just started making music like i i hope i'm better at making analysis yeah. videos i've been doing it for 10 years like uh you know um like it's almost as if people think that you won't imp like i think that people who don't generally improve do not understand that you need to improve to get good sure like there are people who start out good. They are extreme, like, cases. Like, they are not the majority of artists. Right. Most, to quote Aaron Hansen, what, you think I came out the pussy painting, uh, no, God damn it, right? What does he say? What do you think I came, drawing Mozart. That's what he right, says. Right, you think right. I came out the pussy drawing <laughs> Mozart? God damn, I fucked that up bad. That's all right, you can edit it all out. No one will I ever won't. know. I <laughs> won't. Um, all right, well, what are the most common impediments to your creativity um probably motivation and ability and the motivation usually comes from a lack of ability so ability okay there's there's like i hold sounds, myself sounds about right considering you've been disabled for the last two yeah, years just insanely fucking high standards 
for myself. Like I want, I want, I I basically want to escape the pussy, painted Mozart. Like that's what right. I want to do. Like I want that. And uh, I think the trouble is, um, and maybe this is why you've gone into the realm of doing three D and Azumi because you might have come to the same realization. But like, um, back when I wanted to write books when I was like a teenager, I had you know visions of like here's the story i want to make and here's how like but i had no idea how to get there and once i learned how to write i realized that i could not make a story that way because i can't assume that i just can write whatever's in my head like ever you know it might be that that's just an idea that i like fundamentally my style will not be able to realize this idea so like at least for now you know while i like i can practice towards getting to be able to make those kind of ideas possibly but for now i've just kind of been basing my ideas around what i can do you know right. like when i go to make an album or something it's just like what can i do i know what i can't do like i had this uh this album plan called well laid and well paid Mm-hmm. That was supposed to be like, once I start making lots of money, um, I'll make this album and I will pay people to make the beats. Because that's normally how it's done right. in the music industry. You pay people to make beats and you rap over them. I've never been able to do it except, uh, you know, I've paid people after the fact. But um, because I have not had the money, the budget to do that, uh, there is no well laid and well paid. And the reason is I can't make it. Like the sound, I know what I want it to sound like. I have no idea how to achieve it. I've tried. I've looked in a lot of places. I just can't conceive of how to make this sound. So it's like the only way this album could happen is if I can actually pay for it, as implied by the title. Right. Um, until then, I can make an album every fucking day based on like what I can do, you know. But that one cannot be made. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the exact same thing with Izumi as an idea is just that like I had spent so much time making these big complicated stories and I was always like you know the plotter versus the pantser um where it's like a plotter is you painstakingly plan every last minutia of your story in detail out whereas a pantser is just like you just make it up by the seat of your pants and for like years I was always like I'm definitely a plotter uh and then I realized oh no I'm actually a pantser and I just never knew because, like, with Azumi, I remember specifically, like, a couple weeks before Radcon started, Nexus Mania messaged me. He was like, what's the story? Like, how did, like, Azumi and, like, how did this Azumi sword come to be? Mm-hmm. And I just made it up in response, and I just acted like I knew it the entire yeah. time. Like, that's just, like... Right. She, she doesn't have a character. Well, I mean, it's just, like, whatever comes to mind. And it just, it works so much better. Because I would always do these little, like, extra... I have, like, all these books at home on, like, how to write. Yeah. And I would, like... Oh, you got to do these exercises for making these characters. I just have a panic attack, like trying yeah. to do it, and I'm like, I guess I'm a bad writer. It's like, no, I, you just don't think like this. I think that any kind of like trying to do things from rubrics will put you in a fucking brain prison. It's the worst. It um, feels like shit. The way I've, I mean, I talk about this all the time, but like, it's hard for me to actually get people to like start seeing things the way I do. But I'm very big into serendipity as the guiding force of like everything in my creativity. It's just like come up with something and then figure out how to make it work, you know? Or, like, just go with what's already there. Like, a lot of the times in my editing, I will throw just, like, a random clip over a sentence, watch it, think it matches well, and keep it, you right. know? Like, and and for the most part, when I do my editing, I just, like, you know, let's say that I'm talking about uh, that Tony Hawk video, right? Like, the editing of that video is literally I just took the guy's video that I was referencing cut his video up, just found all the chunks of the GBA game and put those at the parts where I'm talking about the GBA, and it just inherently syncs because for the most part, any evolution of audio and visuals together will naturally synchronize. Yeah. It's very easy to do. The so thing, like, why not just let it do itself? I you know? did that in the Neo video because that was so long and I knew I didn't want to like edit it. So what I did is like every paragraph I just cut to a new clip yeah it's pretty and it just worked it just worked it's like i didn't even need to try like all this time i just was such a fool that's the way i used to do the you know the, i mean like you remember the pony days we would get those videos out in like a couple hours so yeah. there was a lot of just like psh, psh, 
psh, put I mean, whatever in our defense, there. though, like it was so much easier when you only had 22 minutes of footage about right. everything you were talking about, as opposed to like a 70-hour game. But yeah, like I, um, I'm always just kind of trying to cause encounters of ideas to happen as opposed like less so trying to have an idea and more so like looking for a place that an idea might come from so like you know maybe i would be like uh i want to draw a comic and then i go like just put on an album and just like think about the vibe of the album like hear a lyric and be like oh what if I had that? Like, what if that was in the story, you know? And then just start writing and then just build off of it. And then yeah. suddenly you've got a story and it's not something you had any idea existed in your mind. But, like, your natural inclinations come out in your writing. You know, like, everybody who's read Kus Omega is like, oh, this is just you. Like, this is just all the stuff you talk about. And I'm right. like, well, yeah. I mean, that's, I wrote that's it. That's kind of what books usually that's are. That's how it goes, you know? If any other author that you thought like you liked made videos the way i do that you would feel the same way about their book you know right. uh all right do you have would that is that the only impediment to your creativity regularly is your uh i mean it just fits into the fact of like because i love M Dot so much and that was like the foundation for like even the idea of me being an internet creator was his career and his like mindset mm -hmm. is that I have ideas that normally a team of people would do and I'm an uneducated, self-taught idiot trying to do it all, you know? Mm -hmm. Like I would do like animations all the time. I just don't know how to animate very well. Right. Or like I would do a video game. I just can't code and I don't know mm -hmm. how to do it very well. Is there anything that you can do like very fast? I mean, I could probably do like models like once a week or something, just make new models. Like modeling mm -hmm. is like not easy. But there's, like, a system to it. You know, it's, like, mm -hmm. a technical skill. Um, animation, of course, is obviously a technical skill. But there's just, like, a lot of nuance to making it look good. Mm. Like, you can make something move. Making something move well is a lot more difficult. I'm just thinking about, like, like there's more than just, like, you're just saying, like, oh, I can make a model every week. And I'm thinking about, like, a pose of that model every hour like I mean, what's the fastest you could do like new poses of the same model? if i wanted to do new poses i could probably do one every half an hour it's like really easy it's like playing with an action figure so let's say that you spent five hours building 10 poses of one model release those daily over 10 days if i spent five hours i could probably do like 50 poses there you go pose yeah. a day i could uh hashtag pose a day Azumi pose a day. I'd probably just do like hashtag Azumi daily and just have a daily yeah, blog yeah, yeah. or something. Daily, daily pose. Um, but even I was imagining models though once a week and like what would like what would be a good promotional for that and it would be if they were all consistent in design like you were doing like um, you know like designing a whole cast of kimono friends or something like that you know just I like mean, the main the main game has an entire cast. I already know all of them. They have like six characters. The rival character. I'm talking about though, like, you know, like one of those like hundred character casts where they all kind of look like Toho uh -huh. or something like that, where there's like a similar aesthetic between all the characters. Right. There's, a same, or, there's like a base model. Uh, just... Like Kantai collection, like any of like the, True. you know, shows where there's like a ton of boat girls or anything like gotcha that. Gotcha games and shit. Yeah, gotcha. That's if you just had like that would be like the model I'd imagine that a model a week would like suit would be right. just gacha style character design, which. I mean, if it was a... That's kind of how a lot of those things started. Like, Strike Witches is, is basically just started as a bunch of people on Pixiv keep drawing hot girls as planes, you know? Like, and Shimada Himu, Fumi, uh, yeah, Fumikane drew a lot of hot girls as planes, and suddenly that coagulated into, like, a thing, I guess. Uh, yeah, but, the internet's weird like that. Is there a project you want, like a big project you want done in the next few years? Um, I would like to have a series of animated music videos to really, I think that would be like the, the best short term tentpole content. Mm. Um, I think they'd be really cool. I have like a bunch, I have like three video ideas already that if I had the animation skills I'd be working on right now. How long do you think they'd be? They would be two to three minutes each. Okay. 
it would be a length of a song. There'd just be a song playing in the background to footage, mm -hmm. and it'd be lit. Um, where are you hoping to steer your output? Um, I don't really know. I think I'm not sure if I want to like double down right. and like make my own website and try and push traffic there, or try and just diversify and go on like every social media thing. See, like the 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 thought that I was having about Azumi is that like. Maybe I gotta go on fur affinity. Maybe I gotta lean into that angle a bit. More. The the thing about they a character like Izumi is that like you have a lot of tendrils that you can put out in all directions, and you could capitalize on like tons of different media platforms and do different things for them. But I also think that Izumi, like, if you want people to get emotionally invested in her, there needs to be like a centralization where you can consume all of it. Right. You know, so like. So that people can binge and, like, have that moment of, like... Because the way people tend to get into things is that you find one thing you like and then you just, like, are obsessed for however long until you're done, you right. know? Uh, when I find a YouTuber, I watch all their videos, I subscribe, and then I wait for more, you know? So, like, with Izumi, there needs to be something that people can have that initial connection with that then causes them to become dedicated to following the rest of it. And so, like... You know, while there might be small things that can get people, like, get people's attention, there has to be just something that would make them, like, I need to know more, you right. know? Because um, that was why I had always said, like, comics would be good because it shows you some of the character. But really anything that just, like, shows you some kind of relatable or, like, you know, just a, a, some the character doing something that makes you think like, oh, that's cool, or right. like, oh, that's adorable. I or, definitely want. Oh, I the, relate. One of the like uh, weekly things was definitely to start doing for for coma stuff, and I'm terrible at coming up with ideas like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm talking with my friend Norm. She's like a god at doing four panel comics. Mm -hmm. Like she she spent like the last like seven years working on this like ridiculously long like magical girl parody comic mm -hmm. and i'm like norm why are you and like for nobody she has like a fan yeah. base of like a hundred people i'm like norm why are you doing this like in the middle of this for fun you'll just like shit out a four coma and it'll like go viral on tumblr and get like yeah. 20 30 000 notes Damn. why are you doing this she's like four coma is boring i'm so good at it i don't want to do them i'm just like jesus christ don't for me then yeah so i was just i was just like don't even draw them just give me the idea and i will take it and run with it so I, can, I, can I, I gave her the that. task. While I'm at RadCon, I want a list of fuck tons of co four coma ideas. When I come yeah. back, I'm just gonna start printing them out. Cause like with the three D models, I could do a four coma. Oh yeah. In like maybe ten. As minutes. long as you do it in the style of like those uh, that that one program that is just three D models that you can pose for four comas. There's like a program that does that. I didn't even know that. I'm just gonna do it in Blender. Cause like. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, oh, it wouldn't be like there's one that has like prefab characters that's that funny. like you can put into uh, different scenarios but yeah um yeah i i think uh with the future of azumi like the question is like because you've been using twitter as kind of like the main face of azumi yeah which wasn't even on purpose it's just where the most traction right. happened well the the thing about it though is that twitter is a great place for images short videos gifs and um you know, like comics and things like that. Just anything that can be consumed right there on the page relatively fast. Right. But it's a terrible place for getting paid. Oh, absolutely. Because nobody puts any value into anything they see on there. And like it, it for most people, I think Twitter is just a like hook to get you to go somewhere else. Right. You know, it's usually like, hey, I'm on Twitter. Ha ha ha. Now watch my YouTube video. You know, right. I mean, the idea would be the four coma stuff would be like the top of the content funnel right and then like the amv stuff would move you onto youtube or my website and that would kind of get you more into the ecosystem yeah. i mean like in youtube uh, twitter is good for making money on commissions because you can have the picture where you just say like here's the amount for each commission tier um not that you would want to do commissions i think you're trying to get away from that as much as possible yeah i don't want to whore myself out yeah um but like i think it's really difficult to like it, it's 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 one thing to like post a cool Azumi video on Twitter and then it gets a bunch of likes and shares, but they don't know about your Patreon, you right. know, and like 
they don't know who you are really unless they continue to follow your stuff. So it's like we need to devise a way. I mean, aside from just posting your Patreon in the tweets, but like it needs to be that when you tweet it, there's a link there that would take you to something larger, you know? Like, mm. that's why I had suggested to you, like, making a website and just, like, every single time you make any kind of Azumi tweet, just link to the website, and then people can go and explore all the Azumi stuff, you know? So, yeah. like, any lead they get, there is somewhere it leads them to, you know? Um, I did start making that site. Because that's, that's like, the on. only way I can actually imagine, like, leading people from a tweet into consuming all there is of the character and noticing that you have a patreon you know i really wish you could like do uh like hyperlinks on twitter where you could like write the text and have the text oh, lead you yeah. somewhere because then on the, on the comics i just do the typical fast or last first next so on every four coma that comes up you can just go it'll just link to the oh. website and you could just go to the previous first or next comic right from the tweet that would be neat. But it doesn't fucking work like that. Yeah. I mean, I honestly think that would be too high-minded for most people on Twitter to actually comprehend. I've come to realize that in this modern world where people are not used to embedded links anymore, oh like, God, you're right. people don't actually people look so for dumb. it. so dumb. Oh, no. I mean, who people on Twitter, if, the, if there's no, like, inline preview of the link, they won't even click on it. Most people are not familiar with the idea of, like, they they don't they have not used like BBC based websites anymore. So like, you know we're used to like fucking zoomers. Because it used to be that was like to make yourself look cool. You would just like embed links. I everywhere. still think that looks Every, cool. It, it's awesome. It's the most fun. This, <coughs> this one anime blogger called Omoi Kane, who was like the admin of Tokyo uh, Mega Tokyo forums. Oh man. He <coughs> I started copying his way of doing things because he would always put his links on like an unexpected word. Like, he'd, most people would put it on the most obvious word that would, like, you know, signify that this link goes to that thing. Right. But he would deliberately put it on, like, an obscure word in the sentence. Hmm. But, like, on a word that had a certain kind of aesthetic to highlight that way. It's a complicated thing, but I was copying that for a while. Heavily autistic. Um, but I, mean, I can kind of understand that because it kind of embeds a question almost or a curiosity yeah. into the link. Like, what, what does that mean? Um, okay. What is your least favorite aspect of what you do creatively? Uh, hmm. All of it, holistically. Like, like not just the Izumi project, mm -hmm. but in general. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess promotion. Marketing is, I'm good at marketing, like you said, I'm good at marketing other people's stuff, but I have this big fucking emotional veil over my own work that prevents me from being able to understand it objectively or its relation to its audience. Yeah. So, like, that just, it's a fucking mystery. It, 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 it upsets me because you actually have the, the sort of temperance and wherewithal to remember to, like, do things in your videos where, like, I just forget to fucking do a promotion. Like, I, I edit so fast, and I'm just like, I want it up as fast as possible. And, like, <laughs> I made two videos in a row where I made a big deal out of this idea that I need to start linking my songs at the end of every video. And, of course, the very next video has no song. And, like, the first comment's like, why didn't you put your song at the end? And I'm like... <sighs> okay. The, this is what I did... Mm -hmm. And the only thing I say, I know for on the I Am Games videos, like for the entire years working on the game, every single one of them had like a a whole video thing during the like the end part yeah. where it's like, here, check out my game. It's right here. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I did that is because in because I had a template for my videos because it had like all the assets and stuff yeah. in there already. And I just added at the end of that template that thing as a Keep composite doing shot that forever. Yeah. I'm um, just saying you should do that. So you just open up um, your file to start and the the uh the pitch is already there in the video you don't have to make it again i have to learn how to do that all you do is you just make it uh -huh. and then you just save the file and instead of opening a new vegas file you open that file i see what you mean and then it's already there ready to go you just drop what you need in front of it yeah that's a good idea um okay what do you know you want to change about your job uh i want to make money from it <laughs> So, yeah, see, that's the that's the thing. It's like, the question always comes... Well, I, one of the questions on here as well, I'll just ask you. 
Uh, how important is money to your art career? Well, the only reason I give a shit about money is because I have to, to live. live. Right. Like, like. If how what let what would you say is the dollar amount that you would feel like I'm good for like per month? Three grand. Three grand. That's pretty good. Three grand. I w- I would personally be fine with less. I just know that like life is Life's, three grand. Yeah. You know, especially in America where I have health problems, I need fucking health insurance. So. So. And I have fucking student debt. Fuck everything. <laughs> how how close are you to that? Not like a tenth. No, like an eighth. I make like, like for the art itself. For the art itself, I only make two hundred fifty dollars on Patreon. Please help me. But for including like PCP and other stuff, right. it's closer to six. Do you make more from PCP than from your own Patreon? Yes. Good reason to be on as many episodes as possible. Uh, even though you're not, you have not been on as many lately. No, I have not. Um. I've just become more cognizant of the fact, like, there was, like, a couple months before we did RadCon where I was, like, seriously considering, like, maybe not even doing it anymore. Because mm-hmm. I feel like I'm really fucking boring on the show. I don't feel like my presence is very interesting. And I was just thinking, like... I think the nature of the PCP is the problem. The well, podcast itself. Yes. And I've talked multiple times during these meetings you don't go to about, like, maybe we should, like, address this. And the consensus has always been, it's not anyone's main project, so we're not going to invest the time to fix it. Right. So it just gets to the point where I'm like, I like the money, but I hate the fact that this is basically becoming content that I don't believe in anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, I like talking with everybody, obviously, but it's just, like, fluff. Yeah. And it's like, well, I, like, I could spend, because like, the meetings kind of, take two hours, the show takes three hours, that's five hours. Yeah. Five hours is like a lot of studying or a lot of work on things I actually care about. Right. Or maybe watching that anime that I never get a time to watch because yeah. I'm too busy doing other shit. Um, the, uh, I was talking to somebody earlier about how um, the PCP, the main reason it exists is because there has to be something that comes out weekly so that the patrons have like... Like, particularly with Nate, he's like, I want there to be something that we guarantee offer. Like, there's, you guaranteed get this podcast every week. Everything else that we do is still paid for by this Patreon, but this is the one guarantee, you know? So the way I look at it is, like, the podcast, whether it's good or bad, people patron the procrastinators because we make good stuff. Right. Um, And sometimes we do it collectively as a matter of deliberation um you know so like i think that in times where there's less collaboration between us or nothing else coming out on the channel because there were times where there was all kinds of shit on the channel where right you we know, were all doing we have, we have solo blogs and all this other shit uh you know there's there's several collaborative podcast series that have simply been on hiatus because we've all been busy with our own shit um and uh you know It's just like during those periods, the podcast not being as good is much more strongly felt, you know, than in the periods where there's other stuff happening and you're not really so fixated on it. And like, you know, I I think that ultimately the point of the PCP is not the podcast at all. Like the podcast is kind of the shittiest thing that we do together as a group. I would agree, 100%. And I would be fine being part of everything else and not being on the podcast but if you're not on the podcast you don't get paid right so you have to i kind of have to go in every weekend and be like i know i'm gonna make a piece the, of the probably podcast mediocre is, is content essentially a weird like pony show that exists primarily to like make the whole endeavor make sense somehow yeah you know? it's very strange it's like it's a very it's, bureaucratic it's kind, of like kind of solution the adapter to make the square peg that is what we want right. to do creatively into the round hole of modern social media yeah um how unfortunate <laughs> i mean it's also part of just like nate is kind of the the like Central, like essentially the reason that Nate has such a central role in the PCP is because he is the person who is the most particular about the way things are done. Absolutely. Like in the beginning, he would not be on a podcast unless it was up to a certain like the reason it was so like glossy in the beginning with all the like backdrops and animations and shit was because Nate was like, I will not put out a low quality product, you know? 
and uh, and we we all at the time looked down on podcasts. We saw them as inherently like low effort, low quality products. But it's like for me we as somebody who now. Loved. As me as somebody who now listens to more podcasts than watch videos, it's like, no, please give me good podcasts. Like, if you can make good podcasts, please make some good podcasts for me, you know? Yeah. Um, and uh, arguably, we can make good podcasts. But, we definitely uh, can. Doesn't mean we always do. Definitely true. Um, I don't remember what I was asking you that led us. We were talking about money, how important money was to your art career. Um, it's only as important enough. For me to live. Like, so what do you think you need to do to make money? Uh, well, first I need to make more stuff. I need to make I need to make more stuff. And I need to make stuff that is more emotionally resonant. Um, and I need to market better. Because I think... I think... We've talked about this before a little bit. But mm-hmm. I think Azumi is a solid aesthetic. I think that is the character that is resonated the most with people. Mm-hmm. She needs more of an active personality. Uh, which is funny because all my other projects, the personality was like the first thing I did. And yeah. this one, it's not, it's barely there. Um, but I think already having the sword be a second character means banter can happen, which is naturally right. good. So the the foundation is there. There just needs to be more forward-facing, emotional, resonant content. I need to not be afraid to market it properly. I'm and it curious, needs to come out all the time. How, how much of your Patreon do you think patrons you like specifically because of Azumi versus because you're Tom and they just like you? Uh, I would think it's probably 80-20 in favor of PCP because I've asked and most people say they only patron me because I'm on the PCP. Well, that's unfortunate. That's, I mean, that I deserve it. I mean, it really raises a question to me then of if Patreon is the best way for Azumi to even be funded. Like, one of the things we talked about, because you were saying that you wanted her to be kind of like a Sanrio character. And I was kind of saying, like, I think you should just start pumping out azumi merch because sanrio characters start as merchandise yeah. they they're just cute weird designs that show up on trinkets and stuff and like you know anything it makes sense for azumi to have like you know you don't just want to mindlessly put her on anything but like anything that it would make sense to have an azumi branded version of just like if it looks cool in and of itself People won't care that it's a character that has a story. They're just like, oh, that looks cool. I want it, you know? Yeah. Which, like, you know, the Azumi t-shirt, like, May bought that shirt just because she just thought it was a sick design and likes Azumi, you know? But, like, um, I feel like because of the... I, I think this is kind of a cross that Azumi is bearing right now is the fact that it has been, until this point, pitched as a game. Mm-hmm. And I think that, like, this video will help to do this, but, like, severing the idea that we are waiting for the Azumi game for, like, the story to begin, I think would be a good thing. Just because, you know, right now it's, like, a character who we understand is, like, she belongs to a game that doesn't yet exist. Right. But there's all this fun stuff. But, like, if she's a character who exists beyond the game and the game was never really meant to be the beginning and end of her story, then, like, there's way more to go with it, you well, know? I think the four coma will help her character. Mm-hmm. And I think the small narrative that it's either going to be a picture book or a comic that I have an idea for, it's already scripted and everything, yeah. will be the the narrative part. I think those two things will be really important in building that up. Yeah. Um, if you want like a very crystal clear idea of like ideally where I'd want Azumi to be in like five years, Bloody Bunny is it. What is uh, Bloody Bunny? Bloody Bunny is a brand. I think it's out of like Korea and it's just like this like angry looking like bunny character and I found it through YouTube because they made a whole series of short animations like 3D animations. So this similar char- to uh, Gretzko it sounds like. Uh, yeah. She was a series of one minute anime. Yeah. These ones were 3D and like hyper violent mm. and just like about this character just like beating the shit out of stuff and it was really fucking cool but I found out later that the character started as merchandise like an edgy sanrio Mm -hmm. and i didn't even know that when i came up with the idea of like i'm gonna make azumi an edgy sanrio but like that was what this character was it's been it's really popular in korea they have like a whole merchandise line and stuff but then they made these animations you gotta make some you gotta make just take the azumi design where it just has her name and just get her name in like as many languages as you can so that, like, peop- maybe just Koreans will just see it and catch on, just thinking yeah. it's a Korean Who character. Who the fuck knows? Who the fuck knows? Um, if you can get somebody to trans... Well, anybody watching who can translate Izumi faithfully into other languages, hit us up. Yeah. 
copy and paste that shit. <laughs> um, I was going to say something. Oh, well, I was just going to talk about how um, with when I was working on uh, Kus Omega and this guy contacted me when I was talking about like doing a physical version of the book. Um, he just like messages me. He's like, I want to adapt Kus Omega into a comic with you writing and me doing all the art. And he's like a good artist. So I was like, I mean, I cannot adapt this book into a comic. It would take way too long. It would be like, a, you know, It'd the book is very book. fucking dense. It would be right. very hard to do. Like, it would take way longer to tell the story in a comic. But, uh, um. Comics are not easy. But then, like, the thought of, like, what if there was a Kusa Mega comic? I was just like, well, this universe has tons of characters, tons of stories that could be told in it. So that was what gave me the idea to then just write a bunch of, like, short comics for the physical book. So I just made, like, a bunch of one-page comics, a bunch of two-page comics based on various characters and scenarios. And then, like, after having done that... It was like suddenly the, the the scope of the story itself had expanded because these characters had no interactions like this in the story. You know, like right. they're showing different emotions than they showed in the book, so you see different sides of them. And like, even though these pa these comics like one page, just like seeing the character in such a different situation from the main story, like adds a ton to your perspective on them. For sure. So then I was like. Oh man, there's like there's so much potential of what you can do with just taking a story and just being like, how many stories can I tell in this world through different mediums? You know, like this character, uh, these characters are in a band. I could make a song that is the song that they made. You know, I can make a, a, a video of these three characters when they had this one fight that I described in the book. We can make that into an animation or something. You know, like there's just infinite potential to rework, readapt, add to. You know, and it's like. So the question becomes less like, what ideas do I have for how to expand on the story? And more like, what makes sense for me to do? Like, like again, with like the four comas, where it's like, it's, it's not a question of like, do I have ideas for four comas so much as like, if I have to make one every week, what can I do? You know, and then just making a list of everything you can do, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I see with Izumi... That just because of the fact that she's inherently, like, not tied to anything currently, that the potential is limitless. You could put her in any scenario, you yeah. know? Anything that fits with the tone of her universe. I mean, the, the interesting thing, like, I mean, you played the PS2 Shinobi, and you know that's, like, mm -hmm. a huge influence. Like, that game doesn't really make any fucking sense. Mm. Like, I don't remember cutscenes in that game. I mean, in the first level, you're in, like, a city... Yeah. And then, like, you're in a ninja village, but then there's a fucking helicopter in the ninja village that attacks you, and it's like, why is there a helicopter here? It's just, the game makes no fucking sense. And that's, it's just like, it's, that, that helicopter looked pretty cool, and it was on fire. Like, that's cool. Like, that's just the idea. Like, the Izumi game is gonna be, like, you know, like, a warehouse, and then a city where you fight a kaiju, and then there's, like, you know, a Cthulhu monster in the end. Like, these are all, like, mm -hmm. it's just, it's, because, like, classic Sega games, they just throw levels at you, and there's no rhyme or reason to them. Yeah. There's no thing connecting them. And that's just, like, the world in general. It's, just it's like, all aesthetic. Like, it's just Sega yeah. games are all aesthetic. It's like playing Ninja Gaiden on the original Xbox, where you start out in a ninja village, mm -hmm. and you're like, oh, this is like a ninja period piece. And then the level, the second level, you're on a fucking futuristic airship, and guys are shooting machine guns. Like, what the fuck just happened? Yeah. Like, that's the idea. It just, But it's an interconnected world. Like, there is a city in the lore of the game. It just yeah. aesthetically and, like, narratively is very fucking weird it mm -hmm. just kind of looks cool and that's the idea well that means you have infinite possibilities exactly. essentially um what would be your threshold for disappointment in yourself in the next year like how if if you what would be what would a disappointing end of this year look like and what would a not like a gratifying end of the year look like um okay disappointing would be being basically in the same place I, I am now because I got my tax return back in January and my monthly income on Patreon exactly the same the entire year. Like every time I would gain a patron, I'd lose another one. So it was just like no growth, zero growth. And that's when I decided when that mail came in, I'm like, the game is dead. It's like, this yeah. was clearly a 12 month failure. No, no ifs, ands or buts. Like as cool as it was satisfying personally, the bills got to get paid. It's not working. So if You've another built, year... built some skills for the future, sure, 
but, but not for now. Yeah, if if another year goes by and I get another fucking letter like that from Patreon Corporation, that will be very sad. Um, good would be if I can get to double the Patreon, if not get to a thousand dollars. Okay. That would be a big step in the right direction and would open up a lot of doors in terms of just like living life again because mm-hmm. i'm on the rebound obviously after two years of crippling dan if you were to if someone's watching this video who doesn't know about azumi or doesn't know about you in general where would you want to send them to um probably just twitter honestly i mean it de- i guess it depends because like, it's kind of like the problem with the twitter is that the stuff is on there but like you gotta scroll endlessly to find it right and it, it, i'm so fucking mad that twitter got rid of moments you fucking idiots it was such a good feature for artists to curate work and you got rid of it go kill yourselves um yeah i think okay by the time this video goes up i will hopefully have the zoom website finished it's half done I was right now to put this video up like immediately then don't do that yet <laughs> it is not going to be done okay. in 10 minutes um i figured this was going to be like a fun Thing done way after i mean i can hold on to it no it's fucking fine um yeah just twitter for now there'll be a pinned tweet with the website as soon as it's done um and, yeah uh, also patreon obviously definitely there are over 50 bonus podcasts i enjoy them. most of them are good some they're, of them aren't there you got you've got good energy in your podcast you usually come in hot I do. And that's like the, the, always the disappointment when I finish recording a Patreon podcast. I'm just like, I wish I was like this on the PCP. I'd have so many more people interested in my work. Yeah. Uh, you just got to put out your own solo podcast again. I guess so. People really like those, but I always felt like such a conceited fuck doing them. Well, just, you know, make them not about you. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh diversifying i just wrote down the word diversifying let's talk about how we're going to diversify your income yes so you currently make money through your patreon and through the pcp do you make it do anything else um i mean i have the i mean i have merch but it doesn't sell because it's not very good and i haven't put a lot of time into it i well, love I mean, to do... part of the problem is that you you have merch through like a merch site but not through like because when we historically anytime that you or i have made merch it sells much better than if we try to do it through spreadshirt or something yeah the margins can be better too the margin yeah. can be better for both sides of the equation we can yes. sell for less and make more which is what i did with my uh digiboss shirt and i, sold I all 50 of those. have been thinking about doing limited run pre-orders where it's like i have 20 shirts that i'm going that's to a make. really good idea pre-order them yeah and then I don't even have to buy materials until I know exactly how much are going to be right. sold. You have X time to X time to pre-order. Mm-hmm. I'll cut it off when it's done. And then I could just make X amount, ship right. them out. I know the money's in the bank. That is, I mean, that is essentially what I did with the shirts because everybody had to pay for them before I shipped them out. So, right. I mean, I, I already had bought the shirts themselves, but, you know, it, it was basically just, hey, reserve your spot of one of the 50 shirts and... Um, you know, once they're gone, they're gone. I mean, even just selling, like, 20 shirts a month would be huge. That would, like, double my income. Yeah. I mean, you should do that. I definitely. should. I had this... The so funny thing is, like, I do... This, this I, could still happen, but I had this really grand plan um, for the Cantent Patreon, assuming that Nate was going to move down sooner. Um, I don't know when he's going to move to Virginia. I hope it's going to happen. But uh, should grill him about it when he does. I, I had this plan of like a revolving monthly shirt and like like have like a, we always sell like a shirt and a sticker and a hat or something like that. Maybe a hat seasonally, but like we just rotate the design. So it's like all of them are exclusive to the month they exist. It's just like we we make the shirts ourselves, we make the stickers ourselves, but like and. Every month, there would be one sticker that's just the word content, but we would change the design of it every time. So it'd be like different text, That'd different cool. um, different look, different colors and all that. And then there'd be an original second sticker based on something funny, I guess, that happened in the show um, and a new t-shirt. So every month, there would be the availability of a different... So if you don't like this design, wait till next month, you know? Right. Or if you want to have a ridiculous amount of content t-shirts, buy them all, but... 
I kind of do something like that right now on Patreon. My highest tier is twenty dollars, and it's a quarterly merch club. So yeah. every three months, I send out a T-shirt and some other things. Like the first one I did, I did a, a Zoomy you T-shirt. To, you should promote this way more, by the way. I feel like an asshole every time I talk about it. I mean, why? Like, you have to think of it this way. Anybody who does buy it is somebody who did want it. I know. So it's like, you talk about it, you're just telling people, hey, here's a thing that's available for you to buy. I don't care if you buy it or not. Well, here's my pitch right now. If you want official Azumi merch Uh that's only available through my Patreon, there's only a couple in existence. Like, the first guy who got on there, he has the only shirt in existence that will ever exist of that design. I made it specifically for that t-shirt. I made, I bought from eBay a reproduction Sega Genesis cart and made a custom label and put it on there so you have a cart of a Zoomy game only available that never will make it again tons of cool merch like that every couple months I'll just send you it out to your address like last month I did a fucking cool like pencil sketch design of a Zoomy meditating in the bamboo forest on a t-shirt don't buy my care pack because I'm months behind are you really? I am. Oh, I'm, months, fuck. I'm months behind on everything. I'm months behind on rants. I'm months behind on care packs. I'm months behind on. I'm years behind on taxes. Oh god. I am. Uh, I've mostly got gray hair. Now I'm sure you can. Have you have you noticed how fucking gray I am? On there's the there's some gray there. Mine is too. I just hide another hat now. Mm. It's just, it's bad. Um, if you want to give Digi a break. And you still want merch. <laughs> I got you. I yeah. got you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it's fucking good. I got satisfied Tom, customers. Tom's more reliable. Somewhat. At least, yeah, no, much, I would say, actually, probably. I mean, to be fair, I'm only working with two people, and I do it every three months yeah, instead of every month. Yeah, yeah. Um, I should probably. I should probably do a bigger care pack on a, on a longer schedule. Like I just, what I did, because I looked at yours, and I was like, I'm definitely not going to have time to do it monthly. Wise. So, I mean, that was my, 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 uh, I started off the year. Yours right? is $50, right, for the care package? 40. 40. What I did is, I said, I'll do it 20 so it's lower to get into, yeah. but then it's technically $60 a package because it's every three right. months. And, like. That'll more than cover yeah, the shipping. You offer more than I do, too, so. Yeah. Uh, but. The, uh, fuck, I'm fucking getting tired and forgetting what I'm talking about. Yeah, dude. We were talking about diversifying your income. Yes. Yeah, merch is one way. Um, there, I don't, I don't, can't really think of any way that, like, Azumi could be shacked up with an advertiser, you know? Like, no. I don't really one of know the what things, kind of promotions it could be. This is one of the things I was thinking. This isn't really, like, diversifying income, but it's a way of, like, maybe getting more audiences. I was thinking of, like, doing like finding artists on twitter or anywhere really that mm-hmm. make similar kind of animal characters and do like pair up things like make a 3d model of their character and have them doing something together right and then you did that before adding them once, didn't you i did it with deadly comics mm. which we know so it's kind of different but that worked pretty well and we had like a back and forth thing going on for a while but i just figured like fan art is good for getting audience but a it's attracting fans of something that's not the thing you actually want them to pay attention to. And B, it's like usually you do fan art of like big projects. Right. And so it's never going to get back to the official source. Yeah. But if you do a Twitter artist, they have a much more engaged following on the platform. I mean, I do think it would also be a good idea to just draw a Zoomy with actual popular characters. Just probably. doing things. Because that would probably draw some attention. Because then people would be like, who the fuck is this character? Why are they with the character I care about? You know, How dare they suggest that they deserve to be alongside this character I love? But yeah. then they realize she's dope as fuck. Um, what parts of your job do you think could be outsourced to other people? Or would you like to outsource to other people? Everything... But modeling and texturing, mm. ideally. In an ideal world, I would be a modeler and a texture artist, and I would do storyboards for animations and everything else I would outsource. Animation, go. Comics, go. Just like all that stuff, I'll be the ideas guy for that. Yeah. Like the the reason I don't do writing and stuff, even though I, I really like writing, and every time I read a book, I'm like, man. I could do this. It'd be fun. It's like the visual component is so fucking like autistically important for me. Right. Like having like a, an, that identity. That's kind of like when, when I was talking before about how 
the stories I used to want to write, like I just can't write them. Like that's a part of it is that I had these ideas in my head that are very visual ideas, but I have no idea how to describe them. And like right. when I write, I do not write in a style that describes things heavily because I just don't know how. Like and it doesn't come naturally to me. Like I tend to just pick like one detail per scene. It's like he walked into the room and it smelled funny. And like that's it. You don't sure. need to know anything else, you know? Um, as long as it's enough to keep you engaged with the scene. But that's just like I tend to be like hyper tight. I want all of like every sentence to communicate meaning and that's harder to do when you're trying to like describe a whole fucking setting like an Edgar Allan Poe book. I think, book, I think it's really good in your writing that you don't do that because like a lot of people like are very particular about like the picture that's being painted in the reader's head. Mm -hmm. And the problem is like you just have no control over that. No. And I personally... I'm not good at visualizing writing. Like when I read books, I struggle. It's like no matter how much detail there is, I real. Uh, in fact, the more detail there is, the more I kind of struggle to picture. Agree. Because I'm like, wait, okay, like. Because like when you say to this, me, you know, like, like the character entered the castle, yeah. my brain has already made an I entire made up castle. A castle. Right. So exactly. when you tell me there's something over there, I'm like, I thought that was over there, right. and I'm already lost. Exactly. I tend to think the same way. So like So go very light on detail for that. But I tend to make my like all of my writing is too dense because I write to the level that I would understand and it's harder for me to put myself into the shoes of like what would the what does the audience know? You know, like how much do they know compared to what I know about this situation of these characters like which is just, you know, I'm just saying I'm autistic. It's hard, okay? It's not easy being 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 having to actively consider what somebody might know that you don't or right. don't know that you do. It's tough. Um I have no more questions for you, so Cool. How do you feel about your future of your artistic career? Do you feel hopeful or not? Um, I mean I'm I feel like I'm finally, like, just putting... I, the ego death is so fucking important, because that's, like, been a big yeah. problem. I have a Discord where it's just, like, me and, like, six other people that I work with, and, like, I'm offloading work to. That's very important. They're all busy, so it's very slow, but they're there, and that's, like, a huge step for me. If I can just start, like, focusing on my strengths and not trying to be MDOT anymore, I will be so much better. So... I'm really hoping. The only thing that's the only thing that's really making me feel bad about my work is that now that I'm like I'm gonna get the four comas, I'm gonna do this little book, I'm gonna have like I have the plan. Mm -hmm. I get to go home and make 300 buttons and 175 T-shirts yeah. and then package them all. It's gonna take me like a month. <sighs> that's kind of why all of my Patreon stuff is behind because when I have the choice between you know watch five episodes of Teen Titans and rant about it uh, or you know make anything at all then make anything at all is just a more attractive option to me but well digi i think uh if you're drowning that just means you're charging too little like if you're over capacity mm -hmm. that means that price i, I already i already raised the prices and it it i didn't raise them far enough yeah, cool. i guess um, i would much rather well, it's, it's really just a matter of like i raised the prices thinking it would be more prohibitive and instead it just meant that i now have to watch even more than i did before i make more money but i have to it will take up even more of my time how does it take up more of your time because by raising the price i segregated it originally it was well segregation's bad originally it was if you pay 15 dollars you get a rant and i will watch like up to an episode of whatever you're talking about but there were lots of people who would want me to watch things that were longer and I would just like watch 20 minutes of it, you know, and then review it. So I wanted to give people an option to like make me watch something all the way through if they were willing to pay $30 for it. Okay. 10 people were willing to pay $30 for it every month. So it, uh, that's like, all right. Well, you should have done yeah. the fifth, the, the first one should have gone up to 30 and the full thing should have been 50 or 60. You're right. But, uh, I mean, I'm just going to have to, like, in April, just, like... My my post-RadCon plan is get my Kickstarter launched, 
um, do uh, the very long analysis video that I am working on. I'm stoked. I'm ready. Um, and then, like... If you want to bounce ideas off anybody about that video, by the way, dump um, it all on yeah, me. Yeah, no problem. Um, but, yeah, a super long analysis video. Kuso make a Kickstarter. I feel like there's a third thing I'm supposed to do. And then, <laughs> like, when April comes around, it's just going to be like, all right, well, now I'm going to do uh, two weeks worth of nonstop rants and care pack building. And that's just where I'm going to have to be for a little bit. Yeah, right? obligations, man. Hopefully, I will have bought some time with my long ass analysis video. I mean, you know what? Do, go... you, do you tend to think of things in terms of like how much time have I bought myself? Because I always do. I'm always like, yeah. like how much, like how much freedom I allow myself to have depends on like not just how many things I've put out, but like how worthwhile they are to how many people. Like, if I put out a video that gets 100,000 views, I'm like, I don't have to do anything tomorrow. <laughs> if I put out a video that gets 8,000 views, I'm like, I need to put out four more videos I don't today. think I'm at the level of success where I can even start thinking in metrics like that at this point. Mm -hmm. Everything's an uphill battle. I understand. My, my equation is always, like, min-maxing my life so I can just cut out as many distractions as possible. Because I'm, like, yeah. so autistically unitask-minded, it's... See, my, my problem is that left to my own devices all i do is work like i don't i don't find anything more fun than work on like writing and shit so i will do it to a point where it is not good like like i just because i would rather just you know follow every new idea that comes into my head than like stop and think through and like try to do the best thing going forward like if if i just start putting out like you know five vlogs in a day it's like all of those five vlogs might have been pretty good ideas and they might have all got like five to ten thousand views but like that was a day that could have been spent towards something bigger that might have been right. even more rewarding but like ooh, although every single one of those ideas felt really good in that moment you know yeah absolutely i mean for me it's like i don't do work as much as i should that is only because i have analysis paralysis mm. is that like if i didn't have to do all this like you know supplementary content to get the main thing off the ground, right. I would work all the time because I just be like, okay, I'm going to make the best PS2 game ever made. Mm -hmm. And like, oh, before you do that, you have to like do all the work. I would just go on CG Cookie for like two years and just learn everything. Right. And then when I was done, I would just do modeling for like ever. Cause like that shit's really fucking good. And like, that's like the, the biggest come of my life. But mm -hmm. you can't just do that because you still have to be alive for the 10 years it's gonna take you to learn how to right. do that. So there's all those other things. And so when I wake up in the morning, it's like, okay, should I do some like modeling tutorials today? Or maybe I should do some animation tutorials. I haven't learned about that. But what about rigging? Like I really got to make the rig better so I can animate it better when I get around to learning right. animating. But then I also need to like make a comic that needs to be done this week. But then I also got to do some like character building to get the personality right. out. So then it's like, I have 50 options of what I could do today. Yeah. I have no idea where the hierarchy of these needs are, are at. So instead I'll just be like, I'm just gonna shove my thumb up my ass and be on Twitter. I think day. I think here's here's what my advice would be to you for for dealing with that. Um, until you're making a thousand dollars a month on Patreon, always choose the option that will lead to money as directly as possible. Just whatever you think will most directly lead to your Patreon increasing, choose that of the milieu of options. Uh, make My Little Pony videos. <laughs> <laughs> well, I meant of the things of the things that you consider viable, like of the things you want to do. Like, okay, like maybe I have uh, an idea for a post, and I can only do it if I make if I learn this rig rigging thing. Then, like, do that. But if you have an idea that doesn't require you to do that, that could be, you know, a thing. Yeah. Just do the one that doesn't require you to learn anything until. You know, until the day you have an idea that does require you to learn that thing that you think is good enough to pursue. Mm -hmm. Just the idea of setting Patreon goals like that and like actually sticking to them could be pretty potent. It's like, oh, I want to make this really cool project. Well, you're too poor, you fucking bitch. Mm -hmm. That'd be an interesting way of thinking. Could work. Could try it. Because like I, I tend to have, uh, I've started culling 
the, so I, I wrote this like book at the start of the year called Enter Flow State, my like journal, where I was trying to tell myself like you need to give yourself more time for everything. Like anything that you think, oh, I can put this out every day, make it every other day. Oh, I can put this out every week, make it every other week. There's no reason because you, I always double book everything and I have too much shit on my plate. Mm. So uh, and then I come up with new ideas all the time. So it's like leave space for those new ideas, and then. Uh, what I've started asking myself each time I have an idea for a project is like, how much is this idea worth? Like, what will this, what will be, what is the level of effort that I could put into this that will have return on investment of time? Sure. Like, uh, I've been using this as an example, but there's this album by the band The Cult called Sonic Temple that I got into from hearing it on the radio. And like, every time I listen to it, I think like, oh man, there's like, there's so much interesting storytelling. Like, I love the songwriting on this album. Like, oh, I can make a whole analysis video about this album, like going in depth on every song. And it's just like, that will be worth nothing. Right. Nobody will watch this. It's about thirty year old album. Nobody talks about. It will not get any views. So like, what is a level of effort I can put into this where it will be justified? And the answer is like an hour. You know, like if you can do this in an hour, you could do it. I can't do it in an hour, so I'm not going to do it until I can do it in an hour. That's the like I still haven't made that video. There was another one, like I had the idea for that one and this other one by a band called Manfred Mann's Earth Band, uh, one of their albums, but I didn't have as much complex stuff to say about that one. So that mm. one I just did a vlog, got all my thoughts out, posted it. 8,000 views, whatever, you know? Right. Eight bucks for 15 minutes of work sounds good to me for a video I wanted to do just because I listened to the album and thought it was cool. Like, the Sonic Temple one, a little more complex. Can't just do it off the top of my head. I have to actually analyze the lyrics to kind of make the points I want to make. Eh, it can wait. It can wait till a, a, whatever far-flung future where I no longer have to worry about making things that sell if such God, a future exists. I know. That well, beautiful ben has his way. Maybe we will. Of, I was picturing more like having royalties no, from no, uh, no, book no, deals no, no, and no. stuff. <laughs> not at the rate we're going. No, not, not even close. Well, I don't know. Speaking of books, the other thing I want to do by the end of is I want a physical book. I do. Even if it's a small I, I'm gonna one. I'm going to tell you right now, I think that physical shit it's is... It's so cool. It's, well, it's, under, it's kind of underrated at this point because... We all kind of hate physical media because, like, DVDs are fucking pointless. Um, I would know. never buy a DVD. Books, I still think, are cool. I love to read books and manga and stuff like that. So, like, there's certain physical media I really appreciate having. But it's also, like, uh, to to use a word Don Jolly would use, reifies it. Like, it brings it into reality. It makes it it makes it makes feel more real. Absolutely. Like, you have a tangible Absolutely. thing. So, that is like, super important. And I think that... That engages the most core people the hardest is the idea right. of like, you know. My passion can be physical. And that we, I mean, in the case of like us making the shirts, like, again, in my experience, the number of t shirts I have successfully sold through any website ever is like one. <laughs> through when we sold the pony shirt right. that you designed for me. And the number of t shirts I've sold through like, just tweeting that I was going to sell a shirt or like making a video like, hey, I'm making a shirt by myself, like buy it from me. I've sold 60 shirts that way, you know, from two very limited runs. And it's just like the thought that Digibro himself, you know, lowered that press onto the shirt, signed his name on it and shipped it to me is, you know, and now I have it. And this is a, you know, it's not just, it doesn't smell like the floor of, the uh, the facility where they box the fucking Teespring right. shirts. I'm really know? mad about that. <laughs> the the smell of the, the stank you get from my handcrafted shirts on Patreon <laughs> is 100 percent authentic me. Yeah. No sweatshops at all, except for my own. But yeah, I think that uh, like doing rounds of physical merch. I think that the person who I've looked to as like the best at diversifying his income is uh, the Needle Drop because he does like. Not only does he do, like, annual, uh, I think, like, quarterly, he'll do a new t-shirt, maybe every half a year. He'll do, like, a limited run shirt. It's only around for as long as it is. Um, always with some hilarious, unique design. And then he will he sells, like, vinyl slip pads, like the like the thing you lay down under your record on, the, on a vinyl player um, that has, like, his logo on it. So it's just, like, something that makes sense. Obviously, 
tons of music nerds are going to have vinyl players. And, like, he right. takes brand deals with, like, you know, he has, like, a weekly show where it's just the weekly track roundup, which is just a vlog of him reviewing all the new sh- uh, songs that came out. But it starts off with, like, three minutes of promotions and preamble. Like, and so he doesn't have to do all that in his main videos. He just puts it all in this one end-of-week track roundup video that's, like, deliberately yeah, yeah. low effort and just has a bunch of fucking ads in it, you know? And then, uh, but it'll draw attention because people care about those new songs. So, like, you know, but all the ads he has make sense. It's like he works with Vinyl Me Please, which is, like, a service that just sends you vinyls every month, I guess. So, like, you know, all his brand deals make sense. And then he, like, he he actually got together a bunch of the artists that he's reviewed that, like, had contact with him and got them to put together a needle drop album, like a charity album that they had made a full physical, like, you know, Mm. vinyl release of. And, like, just all kinds of shit that he's done you know, taking all kinds of different types of promotion, made all kinds of different stuff, and it's just, like, you really got to be open-minded about, like, uh, like, the question isn't, like, so much, oh, what can I do? It's, like, what do people pay for? Like, look, look, what what is it that people tend to buy? People tend to, like, buy clothes. People tend to buy, you know, uh, books, but they don't tend to buy certain other things, you know? Right. So, like... Just focus on what people tend to buy, what you can make that people tend to buy, and, like, what has good over-under, you know? Like, t-shirts, when you sell them yourself, have pretty good over-under. It's just, like, the labor cost of, like, you know, losing a couple days to making the shirt, you right. know, is the main thing that kind of sucks for us. Um, yeah. But, like, we make great profit off of doing a run of shirts. Yeah. Which I was... <laughs> I forgot to do this, but I was going to... Um, have May and Michelle, I was going to just like order a bunch of shirts and have them like be a sweatshop and just print shirts and mass for us while, in fact, we could have them do that with the Radcon shirts potentially. It's true. We could I have just, the file. We just pay them a little bit and have them fucking grind out all our shirts. All right. I think we're done with this podcast. I'm fucking tired. Yeah. I think we're good. All right. It is 6.17 in the morning. Holy so. shit. We're fucked. See you around everybody.